Next up on our list is a luxury motor vehicle manufacturer, and that's BMW, also known by its longer name, which is Bavarische Motorwerken AG. German, of course, manufactures automobiles, motorcycles, financial deserves division again, as usual. Its brands, of course, are BMW, but don't forget it also owns Mini and Rolls-Royce. I'm sure they ship a few of those out to China. It's manufacturing all of this stuff throughout the world, as usual. Market capitalization of this big boy is $68.49 billion. You'd have to look at its value in euros, listed as it is in Frankfurt, just one of the core members of the German DAX. It's trading also on a similar, rather low price to earnings ratio. I think we're picking up a theme here. 9.23, dividend yield 3%. So uh, it's had done very well. The share price chart will probably come up in a minute. But in the last while, it sort of fell off. And I think it was because their growth in sales was a little bit tepid. Mm -hmm. People expected them to do a little bit worse, a little bit better rather, and they did a little worse. So what's going on exactly here? We know that they're a world leader. People love the 3 Series, the 5 Series, the 7 Series, and now these electric i3s, i8s, and so on. Did you get the sense, perhaps like others, that it had uh, slightly underperformed in recent times? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the numbers, uh, again, they haven't been bad, but I think it, it could be, you know, just negative sentiment, uh, mm. you know, especially around around Europe in, in, in general. I mean, yeah. if you look at what's happening on the DAX as well, um, you know, obviously we've got the Greek bailout now, but I think, you know, it's macroeconomic factors pl playing into a, a company of this size. I think, you, you know, but if you look at those macro factors, we've also seen a contraction in the oil price. So I think that's, you know, that's going to, you know, fuel the demand for cars. And I think it's a little bit more money in the consumer's pocket. Uh, you know, maybe they'll, they'll actually upgrade and go yeah. and buy one of those luxury cars. Obviously, again, there's the chart yeah. I was looking for. So yeah, so you can it see it like sort of pops up to 120 plus, and mm -hmm. then gets a little bit of a tumble. But what you're saying is that that trend was somewhat similar across the board in yeah. the German market, yeah. and that maybe it's going to be picking up now. Yeah, I, with think, the I think looking at that chart, that uh, for me looks like a decent entry into, into the company, mm. and uh, mm. I think I think it'll do well. I mean, if you are looking around in, in fairly expensive markets today, to find something like uh, BMW, which will be, like I said, celebrating 100 years uh, you know, of production uh, next year, um, I think that's uh, it's not a bad one to look at. I mean, 10 PE, I think if you're hunting for value, that, that's definitely one of them. Okay, and what about the p market positioning? Because is it a plus in uh, motor vehicles, would you say, to be in the premium luxury end of the game rather than the sort of mainstream uh, sort of mid-market? as it is with many other consumer sectors. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's obviously, it's very difficult. I mean, the, the way that the, the motor industry obviously operates, I mean, you need to come to the market with a leading product. If you come with a leading product, you can maintain those larger margins, which BMW manages mm. to do perhaps over something like Toyota. Because you're ma maintaining larger margins, you can continue to spend CapEx. Mm. Because you, you're spending CapEx, you can continue to produce better yeah. vehicles. And that cycle almost becomes self-perpetuating. If you can't do that, I mean, obviously, suddenly uh, your margins are getting con uh, contracted, you can't spend as much as on R&D and your product gets worse and the cycle, you know, yeah. it, it pulls it back, so it spirals down. So, so for me, I, I think, you know, the, the luxury segment where you've got the slightly higher margins is, is the segment that you want to play yeah. in. I would, and that's why I would take this one over. And that's why it's so. encouraging to see them innovating with mm -hmm. the electric vehicles and so on, because you know there's a certain part of the market that's going there. No, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, looking at the, the i3, i5, i8, I mean, I know that I was, I was chatting to one of the guys who brought the i8 out to South Africa and he was like, this is just the worst time to try and launch this product in our country, mm. um, obviously with our electricity oh, problems. See, <laughs> that yeah. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that we, we now have is cheaper petrol <laughs> and uh, more Shucks. expensive electricity. Well, but that's uh, another point worth making mm. is that the transition to electrical is a little bit determined by people's perceptions around fuel prices. Mm. Okay, but before we get distracted, as far as BMW is concerned, mm. it's a mainstream German stock. The Quant mm. family still has like a 40% stake in it, which mm. gives it stability on the board. Mm. Overall, are you going to call it hot? You said you like the look yeah. of the share chart. I think, I think nice time to add into something that's yeah. Europe. European based with the euro, yeah, the recovering yeah. sentiment with regard to Europe. Hopefully, we're never going to hear about those <laughs> damn Greeks again for at least six yeah, years. Definitely, yeah? I think I think a fantastic, a fantastic company in Europe and and one that you can enter now. I'm going hot. Okay, we're going hot on this.